One of the celebrities that I follow, one of the A-listers that I really find to be an inspirational, aspirational person is William Hung. I know a lot of people would cringe at the idea that I'm calling him an A-lister, but I assure you I consider him to be a, an A-list celebrity from the regards that everyone knows who he is. Some people may not remember and who he is, but they know the name. Um, and considering that William Hung did something like almost 20 years ago, like that's how long ago the moment of fame that William Hung had. It just shows the longevity of what he did. And I, I recognize there's some inherent problems with William Hung. I have friends who are of um, Chinese descent who found him to be very embarrassing. Uh, and one of the reasons why is because I think a lot of people looked at William Hung as a joke, right? He comes on with his accent, which is his accent. He's not hamming it up. That is legitimately who he was. His incredibly dorky, amazing self. And while there are people out there like me who celebrate him for doing what he loves and just owning it and being awesome, there definitely is an element of people who laugh at him. That's just the world we live in. But anyway, William Hung, I follow him on Instagram because uh, I thoroughly enjoy everything that he does. These days, William Hung spends his time talking about stock trading and gambling. Those are his two things that he does. And uh, you wonder how much of that is advertising, how much is that um, business that he does, he drums up. I, I don't know the numbers there, but those are generally we talked about. And again, I support him because I, I recognize that he's out there doing things. And I've always had the impression that he is doing the thing. He's trying to do the best. He's trying to do the best by the people who like him, who follow him. All that stuff. So he had posted something on Instagram that said along the lines of, I've only got three more autographed copies of my book. $20, go ahead and buy it. And so I immediately went out and bought it. Aloha, Snow Bunny. How are you doing tonight? Ladies and gentlemen, if you don't know Snow Bunny, you're missing out on one of the... Oh, and Peace Dog. <sighs> Peace Dog and Snow Bunny are one of my favorite couples here on Twitch. Peace Dog is a mental health advocate streamer, just generally a wonderful human being. Check him out. Snow Bunny is a significant other person, and they, she, she's off camera. I don't know why she's off camera, but she chooses not to be on camera, but we can hear her voice, and she just is mods as chat, and just wonderfully enjoy them both. Check them out, specifically Peace Dog, because he's the only one of the two of them that streams, to my knowledge. It's glad to hear that you're wonderful. We're actually going to be reading a book that I'm very excited about in a hot second while we wait uh, to open up the stream because I've wanted to read this book and I haven't gotten right to this. Peace Dog says she's off camera because her beauty breaks all of my cameras. That's a legitimate good reason. So, the book. $20 autograph copy. Why not? I'm going to do it. And so then, about a week later, because, you know, bought it and had to pay for it from PayPal. I just really, I get this in the mail. I'm not flipping it around because uh, there's my address here on the other side of it. And over here in the other upper corner is William Hung's address. I legitimately Googled it and it is a residence in the town that I know he moved to in December of 2020 because he posted it on Instagram and the house at that address was bought in December 2020. So it's very safe to say that William Hung, based upon everything that I can put together as my job as a fraud investigator, wrote this envelope out himself, wrote his address on this, and mailed it to his fans. For only $20, William Hung has doxxed himself to me, and I'm not about to do that to him. Because um, again, he's just too pure for the world today. Um, so here's the book, Champion by Choice, and again, the handwriting on the inside, Champion by Choice, matches the handwriting, I'm going to try to get in real close for you guys, Brian, you are a champion by choice, matches the handwriting on the book, on the envelope. 
So I thought today, to start the stream off, we would read one chapter, and we would read one chapter every stream until um, we're done with the book, and then we'll see how did we like this. You know, if there's anything about change management that I think is important to do is that you make a change, you stick to the change, but then there's a point where you do what's known as a check and adjust. You check, is this a good change? And then you adjust the change as needed. So uh, we're gonna be reading William Hung's Champion by Choice, the first chapter today. And yeah, introduction. Eventually everyone hits rock bottom. Most people don't do it on national television, on the most popular show on TV, and one of the most embarrassing ways possible. But that's how I did it. If you're reading this book, you've probably seen it, my edition for American Idol. If you haven't seen it, it goes something like this. You would show up at a huge baseball stadium among thousands of other American Idol hopefuls. That stadium being AT&T Park, home of the San Francisco Giants. You wait for hours for your name to be called, and then you try to impress the American Idol staff members in 15 to 30 seconds. Yes, this is not what you see on TV, but it is the first step. Then if you make the cut, you get a chance to audition in front of the producers. And then three celebrity judges, Randy Jackson, Paula Abdul, and Simon Cowell. Typically, you can expect to be trashed by Simon Cowell. He is infamous for being the mean judge with his signature brutal honesty, and I was no exception. I was harshly criticized by him. I did not make it to Hollywood, and at the time, I thought I was nothing special. Now, you might be wondering, why would you turn to me, of all people, for advice about success? Let me begin by assuring you, no matter how badly you may have failed at something in your life, your failure probably wasn't as public as mine, or viewed on YouTube as many times. But here I am, a recording artist who is frequently asked to speak to large crowds, and who has now written his first self-help book. So trust me when I tell you that failure does not have to be a permanent condition. As a matter of fact, failure is often a prerequisite to success. My message for you is not simply that you can succeed despite your failures, but that you can succeed because of your failures. In any endeavor, your opponents will seek out your vulnerabilities and try to exploit them. But what if you wear your vulnerability like a badge of honor? What if you use everything in your arsenal to your advantage? Not only your strengths, but also your weaknesses. I have a certain advantage in that I've embarrassed myself in the most public way imaginable. I'm gonna pause here. I never knew that he was embarrassed by this. I find that fascinating, but let's continue. It's over and done. I faced my fear and moved on. I've stopped worrying about what detractors think about me. I had to become the alternative I had to because the alternative was to stay stuck in a failing civil engineering student. I had to because if I stayed silent, I would have allowed everyone to speculate about my true identity and the real story behind my American Idol audition. Nowadays, I speak to audiences regularly in order to inspire people to go for their dreams by embracing failure. Secure in the knowledge that no matter how awful the result might be, is not going to be any worse than what I went through. Can you say the same? Do you feel that same confidence? We're taught from an early age to fear failure. During my elementary school years in Hong Kong, although my parents did not pressure me to get rank one, the highest rank possible, I still felt pressure because not getting in the top three ranks, rank one to rank three, would mean that I wouldn't be able to go to a decent middle school and high school. I saw from Hong Kong TV dramas how getting into a bad middle school and high school would be a total disaster for the rest of one's life. Like being coerced into joining the various gang groups. 
How about you? I just pictured William Hung as a gangbanger in Hong Kong. Like in a Hong Kong action movie. Like, that just brings me joy. <laughs> This also matched what I saw in the news. I saw and understood why other parents would get extremely upset with their sons or daughters if they didn't get the higher ranks. There were 10 ranks possible, and I was somewhere in the middle between rank 4 and 6. But I think that mindset is misguided. By embracing our failures, we disarm them of their power over us. Aloha. Mahalo for the follow, Dan Aduku. Welcome into the chat. We're currently reading Champion by Choice by William Hung. We're on the introduction. We do a little reading and then we get into the game. Where was I? But I think that that mindset is misguided. By embracing our failures, we disarm them of their power over us. And when we fear the fi when the fear of failure is removed, there is no limit to what we're capable of. I used to worry a lot about how I presented myself in the public. Like every word I said, what I wore, how I walked, and so many things that are not that important. If you want to tap into the reservoir of potential that you have, you have to be willing to risk failure. I tried so many things in life and I failed with lots of them. Not just singing, but video game competitions, trivia competition, and sales, including, my, including selling myself during job interviews. Nothing great was ever accomplished without risk. And what most people I meet are worried about, about risking, is their dignity. Don't get me wrong, dignity is a wonderful thing, but it can be an impediment to development. It's easy to succeed at something you're naturally good at, but it's so much harder when you are naturally bad at it. In the pages that follow, I intend to share my story of getting back up on the horse. My hope is that you'll see your own life's journey reflected back to you. As my trajectory is only unusual insofar that it may appear a, involve a steeper ascent from its low point. We all fail, but those who succeed are those who use failure as a tool rather than an obstacle. With that in mind, let me take you back in time to a world in which America was not familiar with my name, a world in which my failures and successes were private. In other words, let me take you back to the time before the life-changing moment when I decided to be a contestant on the biggest talent show the country had ever seen. <laughs> 